Gary Slade. I live in Australia, and this is one of my um, entries in the Robert Murray Smith light up a video, uh, light up a LED video. It's just a simple Coca-Cola can wind generator that lights up an LED. It's a, a three-phase motor which has got a rectifier to bring it back into DC, and I have a zinc bram on my battery which can store up to three volts in this battery with a special layer in the middle. I'll tell you about in a minute. So when the battery charge is up, it can uh, when your wind stops, it'll still the light will still remain on afterwards because it'll store some power. I've got several videos. The first one I'll show you is when I was half like before I put the battery, the wind started blowing, so I took it outside and um, got a video of it going with just without the battery in it. The next one was with no wind, so I had to use the vacuum cleaner to spin it to demonstrate how the battery works. Was fun with the vacuum cleaner on the blower side. Super now 3.34 volts. The LED is still on. Turn the battery off. The LED goes off. Put the battery off. And spin the whirly gig. The LED will come back on. Connect the battery up. Generate power and we're storing 3.34 volts in the zinc bromide two layer battery. Well, as you see, that battery had 3.4 volts instead of 1.7, which is normal for a zinc bromide cell. The way I was able to do that is sort of a center separator electrode, which is a piece I cut out of a larger piece, which is um, something I'd experiment with zinc bromide batteries. I'll explain to that what they are later, but anyway, I'll show you what it is now. Uh, if you look, you can see the plastic, the HDPE plastic, the carbon on either side. Heat, heat impregnated into it. Conduct electricity through, but won't let liquid pass. Uh, has a very low resistance through the from one side to the other. 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of an ohm. Uh, here's one of the plates I made up. Made some round ones and some square ones. Basically, it's a piece of HDP plastic, which is milk bottle from here, with carbon fill either side. Put into this aluminium and clamped up, and put in the oven for 250 degrees for about an hour and a half, two hours. Then you get it out. Conduct electricity, but waterproof. It's a separator in. My zinc bromide battery for series cells. Uh, here's some round ones I made for use of the PVC pipe. Same thing as a square one, just sandwich it in there. Well, how did I come to have this little plastic separator or this little plastic plate in the middle of this zinc bromide battery which enables it to store three volts? What it is, it's a bit of HDP plastic impregnated with carbon felt either side of it, which has been heat impregnated into it. It conducts electricity through it quite well, but it uh, blocks liquid, so it's actually like putting two cells in series on top of each other. Now the reason I come up with this is, well, originally, lead acid batteries, for instance, the plates interlock with each other, and each cell, so you get high amps per cell, you series the cells up, you get the voltage. But with zinc bromide, you've got two plates at top and bottom, it's a gravity battery, you can't really stack them up. So therefore you're limited to a couple of ohms per cell, it's not a, you know, it's got a fairly high resistance. So I thought, well if I want to run a house on these batteries, how many batteries do I need? So I did some mathematics, I'll show you now, but don't worry, it's simple mathematics, even I can do it. Okay, in Australia, we have 240 volts AC power. The wall electric jug will draw 10 amps. So volts times amps equals watts. So 240 times 10 equals 2400 watts. 
If you wanted to run a house on a zinc bromide battery using a 48 volt inverter to produce a 2400 watts, that's 2400 divided by 48 equals 50 amps. Require 50 amps to, on 48 volts where it only require 10 on 240. If you use a 12 volt inverter, it would require 200 amps. Zinc bromide cells usually only produce 1 to 2 amps. You'd need at least 30 cells to make the 48 volts at 1 or 2 amps. If at 1 amp, that would require 1500 cells to get the 50 amps at 48 volts. If at 2 amps, it would be 750. Even if you were able to get 5 amps, that would be still 300 cells. That's a lot of cells just to get minimum power to run a house. Well, when it comes to making batteries, there appear to be some fundamental battery rules you have to abide by. Like one is the chemistry of the battery determines the voltage, like lead acid's 2 volts per cell, zinc bromide 1.7, lithium iron 3.7, and we seem to be stuck with that. And the other way they get around it is, like with lead acid, they interlock the plates, which um, increases the amps, and um, lithium iron, they make a jelly roll, which increases the amps. But with zinc bromide, we just got a top and bottom plate, and we're stuck with that. And you can't interlock the plates to get, to get more amps. So what can we do? Well, let's change the rules. The way I see it, we can't interlock plates in a zinc bromide battery. So what we can do is we can series the plates up in a cell to increase the voltage instead of the amps. I'll show you what I mean now. Well, here's the zinc bromide cell in a tube. Watch some experiments was a bit of our PVC pipe. This is all carbon felt with a layer of HDP through it, separating the, each cell from the liquid cannot pass from each cell but the voltage can. It's very similar to just stacking your batteries up like this but internally in each cell. So if you get about 8 of these cells that's 12 volts and it's about 200 mil long. You can you could put 30 and have the battery 2 foot long. It's um, irrelevant but anyhow for increasing the, um, the voltage output of the battery because I can't increase the amp so that's just my way of getting around it. Well, making electrodes for zinc bromide batteries. Normally, well, carbon is the way to go, and I recommend um, like carbon filled HDPE or carbon black HDPE, but trying to get something like that's like trying to get hen's teeth. So I tried making some, but if you ever tried melting HDPE, it doesn't melt into liquid, it melts into a chewing gum. So I impregnate it with um, graphite, and that's a great insulator. I've done a lot of experiments. This is fiberglass. Each one of these is HDPE with carbon filled either side of it. Originally it was all full of basis foam separating it, so I thought, well that'll um, charge it up and, you know, let the, and keep the, the bromide separated from the length of the electrode. However, when you charge it up, air bubbles form inside the basis foam, they can't rise to the top, so it pushes the liquid out and it boils over. It even burnt the, the positive lead, I've had to replace it. Another experiment, not for the last one, but plates are sliding out, different uh, electrodes, and try different separators to, to see if I can do it that way. That didn't work. So in desperation, I'll try something like this. I'll make something that's super strong that I can put in that can't possibly leak and let it build up pressure and see what happens. So you can see the zinc there, that's the negative electrode. So I put these together and hooked it up and tested it and it leaked. So, not to be deterred, I made these things. These fit out of the Did it up nice and tight. Now let's see a leak. And it leaked. So, I don't know. Getting a bit pissed off. But, look at everything from a scientific point of view. And from a scientific point of view, I ascertained it doesn't work. <laughs> so they say if you're not failing, you're not trying. So I've got failure down by trying arts. And I'm a very trying person, people tell me, so I'm on the right track, I suppose. Oh well, this video started off with this Coca-Cola can wind generator, which is a Coke can. I should have used a beer can because I'm an Aussie, but no oh, well. And then I got carried away with the zinc bromide battery and, and trials and errors and failures. But since then I have had a bit of success. I've been using trying with some ionic liquids to replace the water and not building really up pressure on the cells now, so I might be on the right track. Anyhow, I hope you found this video informative interesting. It's jumped around more than a quick Tarantino movie, but anyhow, hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.